Thanks for hanging in there, everyone. Um, these are my teammates, Aaron, Garrick, and Ranj, and I am Lauren. And together with the support of our amazing sponsors, Jeremy, Greg, and Michael of Intentional Futures, we set out to explore how emerging technology can be used to improve craft learning in a meaningful way. So why craft? I don't know about you guys, but I've always been enamored by maker culture in the DIY community. The ability to knit your own hats and sweaters, throw your own dishware, and even build your own furniture is not only incredibly empowering, but also a great way to express your creativity and personalize your life and your home. Additionally, as students of human-computer interaction, we were particularly interested in exploring ways in which technology can be used to preserve these craft skills and their accompanying cultures and tradition. So, how are people learning these skills now? Currently, plenty of text, image, and video tutorials exist. Let's experience what it's like to learn a skill like knitting via a popular YouTube tutorial. Um, who here understood what just happened? <laughs> let's, let's watch that again. Did it get any clearer that time? Let's, let's repeat that step one more time. It's pretty confusing, right? Current platforms were created for general purpose tutorials, like following a recipe or figuring out how to troubleshoot your router. But as we just experienced, the learning of craft skills poses unique challenges that are not addressed by these platforms. So we set out to find out what was missing. We hypothesized that the missing links might be context of control, a lack of user control, three-dimensional perspectives, and a learning experience that adapts to meet the unique needs of a user. So why is control important? Lots of craft skills require the use of both hands in order to manipulate tools and materials which makes it pretty hard to control a traditional video tutorial. And what about three-dimensional views? Well, most hand skills require an understanding of layers and spatial relationships, another dynam dynamic that's difficult to understand via two-dimensional platforms. Our last hypothesis was about learning. People have a wide variety of learning styles and paces, needs that simply are not met by current pre-made static tutorials. Our team was unique in that we'd love to get our hands dirty, and as a result, we created several different prototypes in order to test our hypotheses. We chose knitting as a use case because it not only represented a lot of the problems we alluded to earlier, but it is also highly accessible to many different types of users. Our first prototype was an online video tutorial platform with the ability to toggle to, uh, between four different views. Users can also change the speed of instruction, make repeat loops, as well as being able to scrub the timeline with markers. Our second prototype was an online skill sharing platform powered by Google Hangouts with an additional camera to provide first person perspectives of both the user and expert. Our third prototype was by far the most unique. We had Lauren simulate a, the behavior of a video, prototype, or video tutorial. Stripping all video and auditory feedback, um, she, could only, she could only respond to the the playback commands of the user. Um, users were also able to freely uh, move in 3D space in order to gain different perspectives. Our final prototype incorporates all learnings and insights from the previous prototypes. It retains the same form factor as the first prototype, uh, incorporates some of the, um, the tailored instruction principles from the second prototype, and is completely voice controlled. All these prototypes led up to the design of Loop a mixed reality tutorial platform for learning hands-on craft skills. Loop consists of three main components. An info panel that provides additional contextual information of the tutorial, a tutorial hologram that presents a 3D representation of the craft in action, and a playback bar that gives visual feedback based on the user voice input. Now, to frame uh, our discussion of the core features of Loop, we utilize a high-level expert-to-learner uh, interaction model. Our design principles of adaptive learning, additional tips, and total control are all addressed with this model. Let's first look at how we address the learner side of this problem. 
Here are some ways we can improve or augment a video tutorial. Some examples would be building an additional repetition of steps, providing more detailed audio instruction, or, and, and showing alternate views of a step. We section these features into two different categories. On the left, we have features that are built in to the tutorial during the creation process. On the right, we have supplementary content that can be added to the tutorial post-creation. These can be provided by the expert, but can also be sourced from the community. We incorporated different uh, quantities and degrees of each of those features into three tracks to accommodate different types of users. I'll get into how tracks work. Let me walk you through a sample user scenario. A user starts off at the intermediate track. About halfway through the tutorial, the user starts experiencing difficulty with some of the steps. The system is able to detect this and suggest that the user switch to the more easier beginner track. The user chooses to accept this prompt, and as a result of the additional detail and instruction, they're successfully able to complete the tutorial. Here's our overall system diagram. It begins with the tutorial selection. Next, we have the tutorial itself, which is where the track switching lives. And finally, the post-tutorial experience. Track switching can be initiated by the user, but more importantly, our system can determine when to proactively prompt users to switch to tracks based on their behavior. Here's how this works. We store a comprehension index, which is basically a measure of how well the user is following the tutorial. Every playback control the user invokes affects this value. Controls such as skipping forward or speeding up the tutorial increments this value, while constantly pausing, repeating steps, or slowing down the, the tutorial decrements this value. When the value reaches a certain threshold, they are prompted to switch to either a more advanced or easier track. The index is then rescaled or reset based on their response to this prompt. Here's our implementation. The info panel displays the track status of the st and steps of the tutorial. The three tracks differ in their length based on the added built-in features mentioned earlier. Thus, beginners can be paced more appropriately while faster learners can quickly advance through the steps. Now, let's talk about the expert side of the interaction. Experts have patterns of instruction based on experience and muscle memory. Because of this, they often do not immediately recall some of the problems experienced by beginners. These blind spots are obstacles to proper understanding of the learner's context. In our final design, we included engagement from the community as additional tips in form of non-pervasive notifications. These notifications would appear in your periphery of the tutorial and when called, will populate the information panel with additional help and guidance. Users can also add content to the community simply by capturing a photo with the headset, tagging a specific point of the image, and giving a short voice annotation description. Now, we would like to show you how Loop can give users total control of their learning experience. I've been trying to make a lot of different projects lately, like a lot. I tried to knit a hat for my mom, but I couldn't get the right views from the video tutorial I was using. So after four hours and eight attempts, I gave up. Then I tried to make a singing Arduino plant for my roommate, Jesse, but the tutorial was moving way too fast for me, so I gave up. Again, so frustrating. And just last week, I wanted to make an ice cream bowl for my boyfriend, but my hands were covered in clay, and I mean, I'm not gonna touch my brand new smartphone and completely mess it up. So again, I gave up. Online tutorials are terrible. But then I found Loop. Loop is a hands-free, adaptive, mixed reality tutorial platform. With Loop, you can learn all kinds of skills. And navigating through the tutorial is so easy. It's totally voice controlled, so you never have to put your work down. Just say play or pause or next, or if you miss something and need to see a step again, just say go back and it repeats, just like that. And how cool is it that I can learn 3D skills in 3D? The best part about Loop is how it really adapts to fit your needs. Because, I mean, we all learn at different speeds. Like when I was making the bowl for my boyfriend, I really struggled with one
one of these steps. So Loop adjusted the tutorial to help me out by adding extra diagrams and text annotations, and even some tips from the Loop community. Thanks to Loop, I was finally able to make this awesome bowl for Bradley. So, as you just saw, we have designed a human-computer interaction model for the effective learning of hands-on skills. A model we believe is not just limited to the craft space, but easily generalizable across many domains requiring hand dexterity and the development of muscle memory. Equally important, we envision a system that preserves the culture and history of artisanal crafts and dexter skills in a digital domain. Extra special thanks to Heath and Claire here with us today, along with our sponsors and the faculty of MHCID. Thank you.